I use uniform every day in work. Uh, so Mo, I'm governor in uh, Haldenkrist. That's the newest prison in Norway, built in, uh, opened in 2010. I started in 2009. And uh, planned opening this prison. Before that, uh, I can start from here. I studied the law at uh, eight, at the eighties, eighties as well, university. So the law, and when I studied the law, I also worked in Oslo prison as a prison as a correctional officer while I studied, studied the law. Then in 1987, I was finished the law studio, studio and I started in the Ministry of Justice as a, a consul. Uh, and uh, I deal with uh, cases from the prisons. So I started already in 1957, work with prison cases. So uh, then I go to the assistant director of work in the uh, Eastern Prison District and uh, worked up to uh, be a prison governor in this biggest prison in Norway, Oslo Prison. Uh, Warned you called here. And I uh, also have also been in different levels in the system in Norway. So soon I've been working in the prison system for 30 years. So I, I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is the old prison in Oslo. Where I was governor for 11 years. And I worked also here when I studied the law and as a prison officer. And I worked in this part of the prison. So that's built as a brewery. It's not built as a prison, it's built as a brewery. So this prison is uh, hold up. We, we call it Bayern in Norwich. Bayern, that's a beer. <laughs> and this uh, old part of the Oslo prison is a model from the US. It's a Philadelphia model. Moment. And uh, this opened in 1851. So we also in Norway have very old prisons. So it's not only you. But this part of the prison in Oslo will close down next year. So they will build um, two new prisons with 100 inmates each. So this, uh, I think, will be a museum. <laughs> So uh, that's uh, me. And before we start, I will show you a little film about Halden Prison. Let's start with how Halden Prison looks like. Smoke on your 
over the we come together and the three prior detention inmates have the same possibilities as the your sentence. The longest prison sentence in Norway is 21 years. We can give 30 years, as you see. But we have not uh, used it yet. But uh, for crimes related to genocide, crimes against humanity, and uh, sort of the war crimes, that's a new rule in Norway. But the main rule is 21 years. So, and uh, if they behave okay, they can go out after 60. If you have 21 years, you can go out on parole after 60 years. And the average sentence is uh, only 8 months. So if you see the total of this population in this, it's only 8 months in this. And uh, yeah, over 60% of the additional sentence are up to 3 months, and almost 90% is less than a year. So we don't have long sentence. And uh, every inmate, as you have in the US, I think, one man, one cell, but the cell, cell is uh, quite different, <laughs> as you saw today. So uh, this is based, based on the principle of human detention. And we don't have escapes from Norwegian prison. No, we have a lot of escapes before, but uh, no, we don't have escapes. 99% of all inmates who are temporary leaves from prison, from permission, we call it, come back. And we have a lot of female staff. 40%, I think, in half prison, we have 50% of the staff is female. But it hasn't always been like this. In the late 80s, I worked as a prison officer in the 80s, and I, I saw it by myself. We have a lot of drug problems uh, in the 80s and also in the 90s, and many inmates with psychiatric problems, but that we also have today. Still, psychiatric problems in prisons in Norway also. We have a high recidivism, 60 to 70 percent of the inmates come back to prison. We have several riots at the 80s when I come to work in Oslo prison in uh, 84 as a student and work in Oslo prison. It was a big riot in uh, the, one of the units in uh, Oslo, it's the old blue ring prison. How do the inmates go totally mad, crash down? the whole block. So that was heavy. And I was quite nervous. But the police come and take over the situation. And we have a lot of escapes. We have two murders of prison officers. And a little, little in interaction between officers and inmates. So that's not so many years ago. It's uh, 30 years ago. We have a big, big problems in the also. And uh, here you see me as a young assistant governor in Oslo prison. There we have me in the 1985. Three, three inmates escaped. Um, I have um, had to take the newspaper in and, and uh, try to, try to <coughs> answer the difficult questions. <laughs> And also the TV call. Uh, I was quite nervous, young and, <laughs> and nervous. We have also two inmates. We have uh, first April two. Have you heard about that? <laughs> they ring into the prison. One friend or two inmates. They shall be released. They rang on the first of April, and it was and two. But uh, they was uh, released. <laughs> it was released. It's totally mad, but between heads, out of prison on, on the 1st of April. And uh, it was, was worldwide. Fools Paradise, they call us. And that was in my prison. So that's me, the governor. <laughs> that's the three nights. 
That's the trend. So, uh, what? Something. <laughs> we'll try to escape from uh, from uh, this place, from the old place, do you see? And we have a lot of cases like this. So, we was in deep sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Something has must be done. Something must be done. And uh, the government, the politicians, say to the justice department, do something. We cannot go on like this. This uh, have to stop because of multiple cases. So uh, justice department uh, put some work groups together. I was in one of the work groups in uh, 1995, it was. And uh, the work group I worked in should uh, look at uh, the prison, uh, the correctional officers, and uh, the role for the prison correctional officers. Can we do something with the role that the prison officer had to do? Uh, we cannot just go on with the hard things that will not work. We have to think in a total new way. Total new way. So we make a, we call it white paper. And uh, that white paper came in 1997. And that was a big paradigm shift in correctional service in Norway. And the main focus in this white paper was the prison officer role. How shall we, they work to do a better job with the inmates? So, uh, the prison officer in all times, when I was a prison officer, I was a guard. I should take care of the security. But the security was very good. But uh, that was the prison officer's role. Take care of the security, be a guard. But in the new role, there shall also be social workers. Still guard, but also social workers. Two dual role in the same person. That's, 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 that's possible. You are, you are that as parents. You have to <laughs> raise up your children. You have to say no, and you have to say yes. And you have to do that also with the inmates and help them and correct them. So before we only look after them, but now we shall talk to them. And what uh, did that role mean? Yes, the consequence for the prison officer and everyone have to be in this because it's the politicians who have decided, the parliament decided. So everyone have to do it or you have to quit. So a prison officer or correctional officer, as you call it, must be able to discuss crime and measures with inmates, talk with inmates about what they have done. How can you stop that? What can we do to help you to stop that? Must be able to plan and monitor the execution of sentence and also the future when you go out to the prison. What shall we do when we go out? Have you a plan for your life? They must have knowledge about the opportunity in the system, in the whole system. What, uh, what is best for you? They must be able to connect the opportunities in the system to the individuals, to the inmates. And they must, must also be able to contribute in general to the professional development of the correctional service. So that's a total new role for the police officer. And then we also make a new education. We talk about two years. So here we have two years education for prison officers. And they go through a two years education of staff academy where they visit school pay when they go to school and for various subjects like psychology, technology, 
law, human rights, and ethics. That's important uh, to learn about the legal systems. And the prison officer have, as I say, dual role. They are contact officer for three inmates each. Every prison officer, correctional officer in the Norwegian prison, have three inmates. They are responsibility for. Like when you come to a hospital, you get a nurse. That's yours. I've been in hospital a couple of times. And I get my nurse, that's mine, when I'm in that, that hospital. And that's, that's safe for me. I know the, the, the case. And I can talk to her, and I can tell her, it's not all the nurse. <laughs> and uh, we, we do that also in prison in Norway now. Every, every prison officer or contact officer for three inmates each. And then they have coach for inmates. They are motivating and they shall be role models for inmates. And of course, they have to take care of the security, they have hard duties, searching, body and self, conflict, with resolutions, of course. And in the afternoon, they are together with the inmates, together, have leisure, participate in lesser activities, and organize social arrangements. And they also are program instructors. And we use a lot of cognitive programs in Norwegian prisons. So that's the prison officer role. So you have dual role, of course, the security, but also social learning and skill, skill work. So this contact officer. So all inmates in Norway are assigned a contact officer who assist in contacts with third parties like public service providers, housing, work. When you go out, you have to have housing and you have to have something to do. And the contact officer are assist you in getting in contact with the, with the system outside or officials within the correctional systems. And the contact officer helps the inmate finding the most appropriate ways to serve their sentence and fill out, fill out applications. So that's an important role. And in 2007-2008 we get a new important white paper in the system. And that white paper focus more on the reintegration work. And uh, that's important for the reintegration work is that we have to cooperate with the society outside. Every inmate in Norway, if you are from Norway, we have also inmates from other countries, we don't help them to, to, to take contact with their communities. It, it's too it's difficult. But the inmates who will return to the Norwegian society, we help them to cooperate between the authorities responsible for the inmates. Every inmate is going to a community after staying in prison. And the community are responsible, responsible for the inmates, even if they are in prison. They shall go out and be a citizen in that community. You cannot forget that person, even if they are in prison. So when, when this new, new white paper was presented, it was with uh, four ministers in the Norwegian government. Justice, government, justice minister, culture minister, education minister, and local government ministers. You know this, guys. Norway. And this white paper pointed out the direction of the correctional service with, fo with a focus on change processes, rehabilitation and reintegration of the convict to a life without crime after serving time. And the message was uh, very well received 
of course, in the correctional service, we like to work in this way. And we want to work in the correctional service, support this uh, white paper, and also, uh, also in the society at large. And the white paper was also subject for throughout political assessment and debate in the parliament. And every party, also the conservative parties, think this was good ideas. Also the conservatives. So we have to get them. Yeah. <laughs> So, in this white paper, we have four central principles for knowledge and corrections. We have one principle we call the normality principle. That is uh, very important. And uh, both in international conventions and recommendations and in Norwegian law, it is stipulated that inmates have the same rights as all other citizens. You don't lose anything. You lose your freedom, but you don't lose anything else. You have the same rights as all other citizens. You take the freedom and put them in prison. But in the prison, you have to help them with all the rights the other citizens have. That's very important. Prison. And the punishment is the restriction of liberty. No other rights have been removed by sentencing court. It's uh, only the, the freedom, we take the freedom. Therefore, the sentence offender has all the same rights as other who live in Norway. And no one shall serve the sentence under stricter circumstances than necessary for the security in community. Therefore, offenders shall, shall be placed on the lowest possible security regime. And during the serve, serving of sentence, life inside the prison resemble life outside as much as possible. That's the normality principle. In practice, the inmates who live in, for example, home prison, they have their own room, that's their home. They go up in the morning, eat their breakfast, and uh, they go to work, to school, to program activities at half past eight. They take with them their lunch. And at work, school, they eat their lunch at, uh, at uh, 11 o'clock. And go back to the unit at three in the afternoon. And then they have dinner, like you are, or have, maybe a little, a little later, but uh, they have dinner. And um, after dinner, they have uh, exercise and, and activities until they were locked in at 8, 30 in the evening. Then they close the door. That's not normal. <laughs> but we have to, because we don't have so many prison officers at night. So we have to. But uh, all day they have the normal life as outside. And they go to work. The work is uh, in another place in the prison. So it uh, shall be similar to life in the community. Life of the sentence, yes, as I said. The punishment is to take freedom from people. We take the freedom. And uh, of course they don't have a mobile phone. That's hard. Cannot uh, chat with friends and be on Facebook. Can you think about that? Don't be on Facebook. <laughs> no, I take your phone and you don't get it back in several years. And, uh, and uh, but uh, other things, uh, of course, we take, uh, we will check the, the visitors, we check the, the some security works, of course, but it's, it's the freedom we take. Imprisonment shall be no work more burdensome than necessary. No one shall be subject to measures that feel, feels like additional punishment. That's important. And we have also another <coughs> principle we call progression towards reintegration. 
you don't sit in a high security prison all the time. You sit there in the spot. And after, if you have 21 years and you will be released after 16 years, of course you sit in high security prison for 10 years, and that's maximum security, but after 10 years, you move them to more open prisons. So we have uh, open prisons and we have also have what we call halfway houses. So if the more closed a system is, the harder it will be to return to freedom. So we have to have progression. You have to learn to live the life before you go out and live the life. You have to learn it. Therefore, one will be proceed towards release gradually from high security prisons to lower security prisons and possibly to halfway houses. That's the progress. And we also have what we call the import model. And that um, means that uh, I, I'm not a responsibility for the health care, not the school, for the medical, for the educational, for the employment. We have a word to come out. We have a special people for that. The library service. We import that service from the community into the business. Work in the prison, but the bosses are out, out of the prison. So, our partners for this are better continuity in the deliverance of service. The offender will already have established contact during his time in prison. The involvement from the community with the prison system, more and better cross, cross connection and <laughs> an improvement of the image of prison and prisoners. The service in questions are financed by other bodies as they are a part of the rights of any in inhabitants in Norway. That's uh, part of the normality principle. And of course, this reintegration work. The Norwegian government has decided to have focus on reintegration work for inmates who serve the sentence. They shall, if relevant, have helped with getting employment, education, suitable housing, accommodation, some type of income, medical service, addiction treatment service, and debt consulting. We have, uh, as you see, the inmates in the middle, they have a lot. The inmates have a lot of problems when they go into the business. And this problem, we shall, together with them, try to solve. They have maybe a housing problem, no house, in the company, <coughs> we help them to get something to stay. Debt or selling, they have a lot of debts, of course. They don't have work, they, don't, they have health problems, <coughs> substance abuse, they don't have education, social network. That's very difficult to get new friends. Maybe you have to get new friends. And we help them with that also. <laughs> so uh, we have a lot to do when we work in prison. And of course, in Norway we also focus on the victims, of course. That's very important also. We try to build bridges back if it's possible. For the victims, and we, we, we have what we call restorative justice, also in Halm Prison, in partnership with the Norwegian Mediation Service. So uh, we have a lot of cases where we have help meetings with the victims and the offender to make us very positive meetings. So that's also important. And we, a lot of volunteers work inside the home prison. We have a Red Cross there visiting the mates. If you are from other countries, it's okay to have Red Cross visiting you because the family are far away. The family don't have money to come to Norway. So the Red Cross and the Salvation Army and 
the Salvation Army had keys. They can go where they want in the district. He gave them keys and they can walk around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this fellowship, the church mission, mission, church service, social service, with a lot of religious organizations, and an offender organization, and for relatives or prisoners, they are also an organization. We have also in Norway a new thinking of the security work with a new prison officer role. We have, of course have the static security, we have big walls, we have cameras, we have a lot of also this in Norwegian prisons. And the organizational security, routines, organizational work, security and authority and so on. But we also have some something we call dynamic security. That means that the prison officer together with inmates. They work together with inmates in workshops, in the, in the evening, in the units, they are together all day. So they get to know the inmates in a new way than if you just look at them and look at them. The security and the, our guards have to be together with the inmates. So examples of this include persons together with the inmates unit, contact officer, pressure activities, and work, work activities and program activities. So they are together all day, all day. And that's the best security. You know the inmates in a much better way if you don't talk to them. How is the time? Don't forget the time. 622. So how long can I? <laughs> I want to make sure we people can ask questions. Yeah. So do you want to take five more minutes? Five more minutes. Yes. So uh, activities, the conference we was was in the this for has a lot of focus on uh, on the isolation. But uh, my my uh, important thing is that. Activities is best, not isolation. It's, uh, of course, that's not good. difficult to see, but, uh, but uh, many places in the world have uh, too much isolation. And the inmates, uh, I think, get mad for all this isolation. So in Norway, we have the main rule in the, in the law. In this section 17 is that inmates shall accompany with other inmates as far as it is practically, practically possible prisoners shall be allowed to accompany during work training programs and for other measures that's in daytime and in leisure periods also, also in afternoon that means they shall be out of the cell from morning to evening, all day. That's the main rule in Norway. From morning to evening. All person together with other. In work, that's section 18, or pressure activities, section 21. But we can also in Norway put the inmates into a cell and lock the door. If you don't behave, it's not every inmate who behave as we want. And also in Norway, we have inmates who don't behave. So we have, of course, possibility to lock them in. And we have a, a section here, section 37, where we can lock the inmates into their own cell if they don't behave. They can be in a cell is not bad, as you see. But uh, we can lock them in there if they behave like this. We have um, in this, this section to prevent pris prisoners from, from continuing continue to influence the prison environment in a particularly negative manner. 
prevent prisoners from injuring themselves, breathing <coughs> violently, breathing or breathing. Prevent considerable material damage, prevent the criminal acts, or maintain peace or security. So we, we have that possibility to help them in, but uh, we have to bite it down, they can, they can also send them to Kalaugen. Appeal. Yeah, appeal up to the beach. In these cases, the inmates are on their own cells right, from a couple of hours to a few days. And we have also what we call uh, power saving measures. We have security cells also in this nice list. Security cells, and they also have a restraining bed. And uh, that's uh, in the series. This is the activity center, this was in the film. A lot of things happening there. Many workshops. We have a very good school with a lot of possibilities. We have a service center who help the inmates to get jobs, to reintegrate into the society. Five people working there. This is, as you saw, the living unit, you saw it on the film. And the cells. And the yard. It's a park. As you see, it's quite nice. In this culture building, where we have also activities in the afternoon. We have concerts, rock concerts. Progressive rock. I like it. Up <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, gymnasium and uh, we use sometimes for certain measures also in home prison we have this security cells this is not nice I don't like using it so I say to my officers use it so little as possible that's the and we, we have we measure using all this cell. And uh, the first year we we have only a half year we opened the hyper that year. So, uh, but we, as you see we have uh, <coughs> once a month we use that cell. Once a month only. And then they are in that cell for from one to three days. Not more. After three days, I have to ask the regional level if I, if I shall continue. And I never ask the regional level. Because uh, we try to get them out again. They have to be a weak man if they ask the regional level. And I, had, I think I've done it three more times during these six years. And we have this restraint bed. That's not nice. Um, I can ask a question later. Uh, how many of the, how effective is that the security cell? Is it, is it mostly the same inmates who come back there uh, on a continuous basis, or is it um, a unique case each time? Yeah, uh, we have some inmates who are there several times. Yes. Okay. So if you see the numbers, if you if you count persons, it will be lower. So uh, you have a person who or, uh, more, more than one time. Yes. So, so it's not a big number of persons. And this restraint bed, we have never used. Never. And I hope that continues. We use that only when they cut themselves. When they will take their lives. And it's serious. Can also put them on security cells so if they take the cutting, try to take the, their lives. But uh, if they are serious uh, about taking their lives, we can use this bed. We have never used it. So, uh, aggression and physical violence between inmates are very rare in this prison. Aggression from inmates towards staff are very rare. 
and physical violence from inmates towards staff is so far known existing in this prison. So, uh, what's, why, why, why is it so? <laughs> it's difficult to prove whether the above is caused by the environment or the level of activity or the high level. They can do this thing all day or a combination of these elements. We believe that the level of activity and reintegration efforts is the main reasons for the lower level of a low level of aggression and violence and the overall good compliance with prison regulations. However, based on statements from inmates that do appreciate the facilities, we ask them, do you like how it looks like here? Yeah? It's still a prison, they say. It's, it's a prison because we take from the, the film and we have strict rules. But the facilities, they like the facilities, of course. And the surroundings and the, the reduced feeling of being in a high security prison. And that was also important for the architects when they, when they planned this prison, that it should not look like a prison. That was very important for this prison. So this is a, you can call it a project in Norway. So, uh, this is the last prison built, so uh, it's, I'm not, I don't know if they will build more housing prisons because it's quite expensive prison. But uh, the results, I think, is good. If you see, this is from, from Norway, it's not only housing prison. But uh, as I told you, in the 80s, in the early 90s, we have 60-70% of residivism in Norway. And now in this study <coughs> we have 20 percent residivism. That's very good. That's very good. But uh, that's only after two years after release. So maybe we have to have a new study and see how it works some years after that. Yes. So I have a visit from America and from US, from a warden in Attica. And he said, if Conway have asked the inmates in Attica to design the prison yeah. of the dreams, it look but it would look like home prison. This prison is to this this is prison to talk, yes. I don't think you can go any more liberal other than giving the inmates the keys. <laughs> And we have, last year, we have also visits from, a, from an American, and his name is Michael Moore. Mm -hmm. Go and see his film, five minutes from a prison in his film. And uh, another prison, an old prison, or a bus station prison, also five minutes, so ten minutes from the original correctional system in Michael Moore film. <laughs> 